Hello everyone and welcome to another video and what is another episode of reviewing your gaming rigs. Now I bet you thought I forgot but truth is I was leaving it until the end of the month and then I realised that February only has 28 days so I was pretty panicky and then the, uh, the milk in the fridge reminded me that February actually had 29 days this year thanks to the use by date printed on it and so the panic and stress levels returned to their usual elevated level instead of extreme but let's get into it because today we are reviewing your gaming rigs now in today's one i'm focusing a little more on budget systems because we tend to feature a lot of high-end stuff so today this one is for all of you budget gamers out there so first of all we have a rig from can cana can canana can every time you know I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna mispronounce your names it's just part and parcel of every reviewing your gaming rigs video your names will never be pronounced correctly by me <laughs> it's hard to believe i got an a in english isn't it can kanana has sent me his i5 6600 rig with a gigabyte b150 board two four gigs sticks of ram a 120 gig SSD, a one terabyte hard drive, and a Windforce GTX 760, all in a Phantom 410 Enthusiasts mid-tower case. Now, I love these white cases. I used to have a CM something case. I absolutely loved the way it looked. It didn't match anything in the room, but you know, it doesn't matter. I like the little setup here as well. You've got the monitor stand, which is in fact a shoe box. Nice bit of thinking there. I do like those specs. The i5-6600 I've had no experience with, so I can't comment on that. But yeah, eight gigs of RAM, a GTX 760, that is a nice budget setup. You know, I've tested it before. I really do like it. And uh, they can be found pretty cheaply now. That's a nice rig, some nice cable management there as well. Nice and simple, no over the top RGB. We're off to a good start. Now, I absolutely love this case from Archie Taylor here, this sort of Alienware inspired case. I'm not sure if that actually is an old Alienware case or not. It looks like it. I think it's just Alienware style, but I also like that sort of stainless steel look keyboard you've got on the desk there. The specs are an FX8120, one of my favourite CPUs, a GTX 950 overclocked edition, 8 gigs of 1333 megahertz RAM and an ASUS M5A97 Pro. Now, j.ferg underscore priv on Instagram here has sent me his gaming rig that was intended for retro gaming. It features an Athlon Black Edition 7850 CPU, an NVIDIA GTX 550 Ti, 8 gigs of DDR2, an unknown brand case, and a Coda Gen 470 watt PSU, which, according to them, has unfortunately blown up and no longer works. That can happen with uh, unbranded PSUs or brands I've never heard of. I've never heard of Codagen. I don't know if they're good or not, so uh, forgive my ignorance there. I got the build without the GPU for free off a floor that was being refurbished and had no use for the PC anymore. Got the 550 Ti off a friend that upgraded a while back. Been using it for a couple of years and unfortunately in November the power supply blew up and he's been waiting on a new one since January. You know, I like that basic case there. I love these sort of stories where people find PCs for free or next to nothing and they upgrade them. You know, that is what budget PC gaming is all about. Finding a cheap rig that costs you very little and still gives you a pretty good time. You know, as long as you're playing the games that you want to play, as long as they're running fine, then everyone's happy. Now, Tyler underscore say underscore, again, apologies for the pronunciation here, has sent me his old Fujitsu PC. Now, I've been trying to get hold of one of these for ages. I love the look of these cases. Absolutely fantastic looking PCs with an i5-3570K, an RX 584 gig, and 8 gigs of DDR4. A, a Fujitsu pre-build, I had to cut a bit of the side of the case to fit the RX 580 in, and it just about fits. You know, I've been looking on eBay at these ever since now. I've thrown this bit in during the editing, as you can probably tell, um, because I just can't help looking these up. I really do enjoy the aesthetics of these older machines. You have a great taste in pre-builds. Next up, we've got dzenon.mjdzc has sent me his i5-3570 rig as well, 12 gigs of DDR3, a 3 gig 1060, two 500 gig hard drives, a 60 gig SSD, and a 400 watt Corsair PSU. I love the all black setup here. The inside of the case looks fantastic as well. Some nice cable management going on there, far better than I've ever managed. I don't know how people get their PCs so neat. I think, yeah, I'm gonna keep the cables neat, and then next thing you know, I look at it, 
cables all over the place. An old RGB mouse used to light up the case via USB port. Now that is an imaginative technique. You know me, I'm one for subtle looking systems and I do appreciate that all black case. And the RGB mouse is just incredible. <laughs> now Alex GH696 has sent me their RX550 PC with an Ryzen 3 1300X at 3.5 gigahertz and eight gigs of DDR4 single channel RAM. Thinking of upgrading to an RX 570, um, that would be a good upgrade with the CPU. You might find that the CPU will need an upgrade soon as well. I'd also recommend switching to dual channel memory and considering you're on the Ryzen platform already well, you've got a ton of options should you want to upgrade that Ryzen 3 1300X as well. All right, next up we have a system from at DJTLH. I hope that's an L, not an I. I'm here to claim the worst PC build for 2020. They have a Core 2 Quad 8400, used to be a Core 2 Duo, that's already a nice upgrade. A GA G31M ES2L motherboard, I think that's a gigabyte board, four gigs of DDR2 RAM, and a case that comes with a 600 watt PSU. <laughs> I think it can only provide 230 watts, an 80 gig HDD from Seagate, and a WD 120 gig SSD, which couldn't be connected directly to the board. Instead, I have to buy a PCI adapter card for it. No graphics card, integrated graphics provided with VGA port. Thanks for reading. <laughs> um, you know what? Upgrade the RAM to 8 gigabytes, slap a cheap discrete GPU in there, maybe a 750 Ti that doesn't even require a 6-pin power connector, and, you know, you'll be, allowed, you'll be able to play some games. Yeah, believe me, I don't think that's the worst PC build for 2020. I have seen some pretty interesting examples, <laughs> to say the least. Gianluigi underscore SIL has sent me their Xeon workstation PC. We've got an X5687, a four core, eight threaded CPU. The old Xeons are incredible. 24 gigs of DDR3, a GTX 970, 500 gig SSD with a ton of other hard drives as well and a custom Dell CPU cooler with added fan. I absolutely love these old workstations. They are a great, great way to get into budget gaming. Um, you can buy them on places like eBay for pretty good money. Slap a graphics card in there because they've usually got pretty beefy PSUs as well. We've also got a custom office chair here. I thought I'd show you that because that's actually a pretty nice looking chair. Is that a car seat? I think that's a car seat with some wheels stuck on it. That is pretty inventive. Okay, underscore the big brain five here has sent me their setup. Looks like an old Acer system there. I love those old systems, the old Veritons there, they have a very nice looking enclosure to them. Now they want to know what components they should upgrade here. Here's my setup, can you tell me what I should upgrade? The specs are an i5 650, 3.2 gigahertz with integrated graphics and 1333 megahertz DDR3. Well, the i5 650 I believe has four cores and four threads. Let me quickly look that up. No, sorry, it has two cores and four threads, but the i5-750, which you can have for a couple of pounds or dollars or euros these days, has four cores and four threads. So that might be a nice upgrade immediately. And I'd recommend slapping a discrete GPU in there. You know, something like a 1050 or 1050 Ti if the budget allows. Any card like that that doesn't require an external power connector. And you'll see some pretty good frame rates in certain games. I think I made an i5-750 PC build a couple of years ago now and I ran a few games on that. So if you wanna check that out, you know, you can go back through the old videos and that'll be on there somewhere, but slap a low power discrete GPU in there and should be good to go. Next up we have at RBX underscore Jackson U. Now we have the ASRock A320 HDV motherboard in here as well as, as got suddenly developed a lisp for some reason. We haven't <laughs> done it again. We have an AMD Athlon 200 GE with an RX 460, eight gigs of RAM, 240 gigabyte SSD, and two terabyte hard drive inside an iGo case. Now, usually I'm not a fan of extremely bright lights, but I do like the blue look of this system. I think the 200GE as well is a fantastic chip for the money. Of course, now the 3000G might make a little more sense, but paired with the 460, and you've got yourself a decent budget combination. 
Again, maybe add a second stick of DDR4 in there just to run things in dual channel mode. You might see a little bump in performance. But aside from that, it's a very respectable budget build and I absolutely love the cheap AMD Athlons. Okay, next up we have a rig from at JTK4849 or Wolf Air. Um, I built this setup in early 2017, a Dell Optiplex 3010, which now is in a desperate need of upgrade and almost zero upgrade path. I think you can probably slap an i7 in those, to be honest. It has an i5-3470 at the moment, so I presume you can slap an i7 in there just fine. You've already upgraded the PSUIC, so that should be no problem. A GTX 1050 Ti SSC, which is 30% GPU, 70% plastic. Yeah, they do sometimes overdo it with the coolers on them, 1050 Ti's. Um, bought it from B-Stock. EVGA has this B-Stock thing, which is like factory refurbished for a lower price than retail. I will definitely check that out. We've also got the generic Acer keyboard and generic Dell mouse as well. Sometimes I like to mix it up a bit, treat myself to the ergonomic feel of a traditional stock Dell mouse. Okay, so now we have a rig from at moth underscore dusty. Now, a, a little bit of DIY has gone into this and I absolutely love to see it. A while back, we needed a PC for my friend to play Forza Horizon 4. We started with an old HP pre-built, but it simply wasn't cutting it. Um, we ended up with this, an Asus B85ME motherboard, i5-4460, love those chips, used to have one of them, an 8 gig Oh, sorry, eight gigs of DDR3, mostly harvested from dead computers. A GTX 760 that had dead fans, um, but they have been swapped for a case fan, and surprisingly it runs pretty cool. See, I absolutely love DIY projects like this. Making something out of just bits, you know, doing anything necessary in order to get a working rig from other totally you know, ruined parts or parts that some may consider obsolete. Okay, now we have a system from at used box. Uh, the PC specs an i7-2600. Great CPUs that can be had for surprisingly cheap now. Um, an RX 570, eight gigs of DDR3, as well as a ton of storage. Okay, we've also got a Dell U24-12M, 1920 by 1224-inch panel there. The controller being used with this setup is a PS2 wireless controller. I love using those. They still feel great in the hand, even to this day. And their graphics card didn't quite fit, so they snapped the clips off of the RAM slots as well, which is pretty inventive, but if it works, it works. Okay, at Matthew88256501 on Twitter has sent me their i5-9400 HP build. Upgraded to 16 gigs of Corsair LPX 2666 megahertz RAM. It also features an OEM HP 1660 Ti. I really like AIM, um, HP's OEM cards. They always look pretty plain, pretty basic, but I sort of love that look. I think, you know, they can be cheaper as well if you find them on eBay where people have pulled them out of pre-built rigs. Now we actually got this off of Facebook broken for $150 and fixed it. So... What a bargain. Now, at Weird Tan May on Twitter has sent me their PC here. Sorry for the bad quality, I don't have a phone, so I had to send this picture with my 0.9 megapixel 720p Logitech webcam to take this beautiful HD photo. Looks fine to me. Specs i5 4440, 8 gigs of Kingston HyperX memory, all times 2, a Zotac GT 1030. Hopefully it's the GDDR5 version there. Um, a 256 Seagate Barracuda SSD and a one terabyte HDD. The power supply is 500 watts. Uh, a trusted local brand, not some cheapo brand for your assurance. I am assured. A cheap PSU, it's never worth it. It will fail at one point or another. And it will likely take a lot of your components with it. And I do like the, uh, the uh, on-screen... YouTube channel you've got on your monitor there. Good choice, good taste. Okay, so at noan underscore cares on Twitter here. He has to short the pins to turn it on. That's the first sentence I got from this submission. We have an i3-3220. Um, we have eight gigs of DDR3, again from a friend for $10. A dead optical drive, but you know, that doesn't matter. They're pretty cheap to come by. And we have no case in this situation. Instead, the system sits in a motherboard box 
which is, you know, very inventive. I remember building a PC in a box before, a PlayStation 3 box. <laughs> I don't know how the heat dissipation works, how well it works. I don't know if it's going to get hot, if the box is going to catch fire. It shouldn't do, but, but, but bear that in mind. You know, that's a pretty inventive solution to having no case there. Okay, let's go for something a little more powerful now, at space underscore horse on Twitter, a Ryzen 5 2600 rig with 16 gigs of RAM and a 1660 Ti. One of my favorite cards at the moment, the 1660 Ti. I love the huge cooler you've got on that system as well. More power than I need, but life is too short to compromise, absolutely. And of course, a floppy drive. It has been a while though, since I've seen one in the wild. Okay, so we've got another higher end rig here, but this looks absolutely fantastic. Frank is this PC's name. We have a Ryzen 5 2600X, an H110i liquid cooler, 16 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 2070 wind force. Please don't spare the RGB jokes. You know, I actually love the way that you've handled RGB in this build. Not too bright. It's actually pretty subtle over one. It looks really good. The cable management is fantastic. Again, I don't know how people manage their cable so well, but that is a pretty good looking setup. And that is from NickTheGeek42 on Twitter. Can you hear my chair squeaking? It's panicking a bit. I've been sitting on it too long. It, it doesn't like that. <laughs> okay, so at TravisChase21 has sent me their i5-4570 rig with 16 gigs of RAM and an R7-370 with a Dell 24 inch monitor. Again, nice use of RGB there, RGB keyboard as well. I like the red fans at the front, and overall, a pretty beefy looking build. The i5-4570, still a pretty good CPU, and in combination with an R7-370, it's going to work quite well, I would imagine. I do like the look of that entire setup there. With that, this has been the budget edition of reviewing your gaming rigs. I really do enjoy taking a look at all of your submissions, even if I haven't yet featured your rig today. Um, rest assured, it should be featured in an upcoming episode over the following months. There were some pretty interesting techniques used in some of those systems, and builds like that, to me, are the best sort of builds, where you really make something out of nothing. You know, there's a bit of DIY involved. Something doesn't quite fit, so you snap something off. I always enjoy rigs like that. So keep them coming at Twitter, at RGNHD, or Instagram at RGNHD. I'll try and read all of your submissions and feature them at some point. Again, if I've missed your submission, please resend it um, with a new message. And hopefully... I can feature your build very, very soon. But for now, please like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you to all of you who submitted your PCs. Leave a dislike on this video. If you didn't enjoy it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.